Greetings, good evening, welcome to Coombe TV, episode 75, uh, quite incredible, uh, always amazes me when we get to those numbers, the good news is, as I said last time, we're not stopping over the winter, the season might be finished, but there's still plenty more fun to be discussed over the course of this winter, we're going to do Knights of Champions, where we're going to get each of the uh, champions from the, the championships, an episode each as we go along. But, of course, we actually celebrate those guys this Saturday night at Future Inns in Bristol. We have the awards evening that I'm delighted to be hosting. So I'm looking forward to that one. Um, so tonight, I decided to do something a little bit different. I wanted to catch up with... Now, I've put it in inverted commas to say the new management team because they're not new anymore, but they're new in terms of they were this year formed and really pushed through their paces 
and they've achieved a lot in year one and already planning way through 2024, probably into 25 as well. And it's time that we caught up with them all. But before we do that, there's a few of you jumping in with your comments. Our very own Emma Strawford. Evening, Emma. How you doing? Have you got a French red on the go, Em? I hope so. Chris Mason, our uh, mean green machine. Evening to you. And I possibly to Josh if he's with you as well. Blimey, our very own Rob Jones, our two-wheeled uh, instructor. Did he instruct one of our guests tonight at any point? No, it'd probably be the other way around, wouldn't it? I'm trying to see if he's laughing at that or not. I'm not telling you. Uh, evening all. I'm just on my way out for the evening, but we'll be catching up later. All the best to Team Coon. I'll settle for that one, Rob, because you're normally uh, focused, but I'll let you off, mate. Chris Rea, one of our mighty Orange Army. Evening all. Ben Hindle. I believe I'm seeing you on Saturday night, mate. So it'd be good to catch up with you. Oh, no, not you. No, sorry. I, it was somebody else that I saw was there. And I was like, wonder where Ben is these days. Are you racing with us next year, mate? I hope we're going to see you out next year. Drewster, another one of our Orange Army. Hello, mate. Evening to you. <laughs> M says you spying on me. I knew it'd be a bit of French red. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, the good news, Max, is that Rob was laughing because he probably knows that he didn't. So there we go. Uh, and Keith Rain, one of our chiefs in the pit lane. Uh, evening to you, Keith. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Don't forget, once we get going with uh, with our guests tonight, make sure you keep the questions coming in because it's a great opportunity to catch up with the team. Evening to Amy as well. Thank you for the like that I've just seen come in from uh, from Amy. Good to see you. Can't believe that the old boy sold the cake or selling the caterum. That's really sad. Emma Brown, I'll definitely see you Saturday night. You're presenting some trophies, our Formula Ford Championship Coordinator. And I mentioned Formula Fords. We've also got Stuart Tinker Taylor, our Fuffer lover. Uh, hello, Chris and Co. from a Fuffer loving camp softcore fan. He is. He sits up there all the time. You've had a few absentees this time, mate. Uh, Chris Mason says, Joshy says, evening. Evening, Joshy. Good to know you're there. Uh, no, sorry, Ben. I know you're not there, but next year is not likely so we're still not going to see you back the mighty voxel corsa come on mate if that can't come out get something else then we want to see you back out so evening sue you've been an absolute godsend to the team i believe towards the tail end of the season when you joined the uh, cat and the team in the admin office thank you so much for all of your work sue so good to see you uh, and i look forward to catching up with you sue lee waterman evening all evening lee one of my revelations this year in his MGZR, you've been absolutely wicked this year, Lee. It's been a pleasure. And I hope we're going to see you back next year out in that uh, MGZR taking on the saloons. Really impressive. The ZRs competing against each other were just so much fun. They really were. Right. Let's get our guests out. We've still got people coming in. Danny Wilson. Hello, Danny. Welcome to the show. Right. Let's do them one at a time to start with. But we're going to be all four of us out on this show. Let's start with a surname. Uh, that we we definitely know. Still, the comments are coming in. Gemma Slate says, Rob Jones, when you're buying a GSX 8S, Emma Strawford, you're a legend. All at Castle Coombe Circuit are amazing. Bless you, Gemma. Thank you very much. And Ben Hayward says, hello. Hello, Ben Hayward. To you too, mate. Right. Let's bring him out. George Marshall seat. George, how you doing, my friend? Yeah, good, thanks. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah, good. Sales and marketing manager, yeah. then. That's that's the, the 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 responsibilities that you've taken on this year, then. Yeah, yeah. Um, feels like a long time ago I started being a, like working in marketing and events, but yeah, yeah, it's been good. <laughs> what, was it much of a change for you? Because I know obviously you're already working with the circuit. It's just kind of yeah. formulating this management team, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was like, I was working in retail as well because we had the new shop coming and stuff. So I was focused on that, and then yeah like still carrying on a bit of my marketing duties and stuff like that. And then, yeah, Max and Rich coming in now. It's just, yeah, just helping out a lot more, really, to be honest. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice as a team as well, I would imagine, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, like ideas and everything like that. It's working really well, I think, so. Yeah, agreed, absolutely. Uh, still the comments are coming in. Sean Deacon, definitely see you Saturday, mate. Uh, evening, Dorsey, from me and Tim's Fuchs Bale. It's not Tim's. There shouldn't be an apostrophe S on that one, should there, mate? Uh, let's bring up who we're going to bring up next. Let's go in alphabetical order because then I can, can't be accused of any kind of favouritism. It's not because he's the king of Coombe. <laughs> it's Max Simmons. All right, Max. <laughs> yeah, I'm very well. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. I know we had you on the uh, the build up to the Halloween action day, but uh, you know now we're actually talking about the role. And I said that we would, and, and you've come on board 
as a commercial manager what does that mean um it, i to put it as simply as possible will help the circuit make more profit cut expenditures so you know it can come in a, a very very different ways so it could be you know bringing in sponsorship and advertising looking at the services we run and looking at how we can improve them looking at new events and new income streams that we bring in like i said before cutting cutting costs and reducing expenditures wherever we can um but yeah essentially just helping the circuit become more profitable yeah and i know that we're going to be able to touch on sponsorship tonight so we'll move on to that because i know that's mm -hmm. something you've been incredibly busy i say over the close season you had to start that before we got to the end of the season really didn't you yeah it's always the way kind of those those conversations i think you know start in summer about the following season and you kind of want to be in the position where like we are now we're kind of securing the deals already so that we're going into 2024 already kind of knowing where we're at knowing what partners we're bringing on board and then we can really um try and make them make the most of their involvement and, and give them the most value as well yeah and i mean obviously as you know is that i have the privilege of, of going all around the country castle coon's my home my heart but I, I go elsewhere and and the things that i see is i wouldn't be surprised if that sort of almost slides earlier and earlier because you, you kind of almost need to be talking talking about it what summer at the latest probably for the next year yeah definitely you know i kind of i came in midway through this year and the conversation straight away were you know about what we can we can do with people for for 2024 you know what once you once you're into year within motorsport it's almost a little bit too late it's all you know it, it, it's all about what's happening next season whilst you're in in the previous season <laughs> to some extent um so yeah it's kind of there's not been a lot um for people to see yet but i think when, when we get into the new year there'll be a, um yeah there'll be quite a few announcements and changes and it's not just on the commercial side it's on the event side themselves let's bring out the uh, the fourth final save the best to last rich it's no problem is rich perry hello mate the events manager you've got to do it early as well haven't you yeah um obviously great introduction from george and max uh i i focus yeah 12 months if not further ahead um especially with something like castle Coombe. i mean it won't be a surprise to people that 2025 is our 75th anniversary so conversations we have for 2024 you know in the back of our minds to the front of our minds sometimes we're also focusing on the enormity of dealing with something so big as an anniversary for a whole year's worth of events and then uh unlike the, the the two guys here i've i've joined having never been to the circuit before uh i don't have a racing background cars motorbikes anything like that i've been in the events industry one way or another for like 20 years so these guys have been great and obviously shout out to mr weston who's yeah. far too famous to join us on a on a Absolutely. wednesday evening like you know he's got to have a show of his own and th that's literally what i hear um but then if you scroll through youtube you can see plenty of shows where he's a part of this already yes. uh but no i mean i i'm very much been taken under the wing by these guys and, and everyone at the track like yourself included everyone's passionate i think that's the thing i've come to i've come to a, an area where you know there's there's lots of opportunity uh for us as a circuit and especially within the events um, and again, from the commercial side of things, how we do our marketing, like there's been a lot of, well, quite in-depth discussions, especially, you know, you try and say, oh, we'll start in the summer thinking about the next year. But since we finished, uh, finished after Halloween, it's been nonstop meetings, discussions, decision making, like, you know, we've got a point to prove, I think, for 2024. And, you know, if you speak to uh, Graham, he's very much everything's an event. Uh, everything can be marketed. Everything is a commercial opportunity. Like you know, we we work together to to do that for the circuit. So yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Well, well, well. And what, what I want to do is just so that everybody that's watching, we're going to try and sort of find out a little bit about the individuals that we now see around here, as well as the the work they've done this year and what's going forward. Uh, just quickly, a couple more comments that have come in. Daniel Williams says, "Even indoors and everyone else, is it 2024 yet?" Nearly, nearly there, mate. Nearly time to hibernate and we'll wake up and it will be. Sam Preston says, oh, no, not Rich Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know who that is. <laughs> no, I think he had a media company once. Uh, <laughs> David Vivian says, uh, even in all, David Vivian, we want to see you back out on circuit again, mate. Although, did I see it was you that is actually going hill climbing next year? 
that's great, but I want to see you back at Castle Coombe. But listen, we've now got all our guests on. We're going to catch up and find out more about each of the individuals. So I'm going to be fair. I'm going to go in the opposite direction this time round, and it's going to be Rich that's first. Rich, you just touched on one of the key points I wanted to uh, speak to you about, and that was that you say that you've come from outside of the motor racing world. Um, first things first, then, what sort of things have you been involved in that you can share with us? <laughs> I don't know what that last sentence I don't, means. Only because <laughs> I don't know the answer to it, so I'm protecting my back. Yeah, everything I've done, Rich. <laughs> uh, all of those board, pal. Um, so my a, a big a big part of my background uh, is like the higher education sector. Uh, I've worked for universities, Plymouth, U and Bristol. Um, but alongside that, I've run a uh, national gin festival, uh, which stemmed into things like Oktoberfest, anything sort of alcohol related festivals and stuff I've done across the country. <laughs> Through the universities, you know, big involvement in things like varsity challenges. So sport involvement, not necessarily from the motorsport uh, aspect. Um, all that up until COVID, the, the dreaded C word. Weirdly, there weren't many events during COVID. So everything I'd worked 15 years to build uh, was, you know, a big change. Um, got back into it and then the opportunity to come along to Castle Coombe came up and yeah, bit of research, bit of conversation. And, you know, it would seem like a no brainer to definitely apply. And then here I am today. I've sort of, I've always enjoyed events. I think, you know, I think if people, we get asked, you know, what's what makes a successful event and stuff like that. Yes, we have to put money in the tills and stuff like that. We've got a responsibility of, in that sort of aspect, but I am very much a people person. Um, you know, if, I, if I'm out and about, when I'm out and about in events, stopping and chatting, everything from our traders to different clubs and checking in on the guys that are, you know, sorting out club passes on action day or cutting the team for race days, you know, all of our, our orange army chatting to the marshals and yeah i sort of like sort of get about a bit <laughs> and like to sort of like chat to people and stuff like that so for me like i like i said i've done loads of events within those industries festivals on you know five to twenty thousand capacity festivals all the way down to corporate dinners and things like that you know so for me it's it's a passion for events and all this is is bringing my old experiences into a new environment and generally getting looked at like I'm a bit strange when I suggest some options or some ideas and, you know, but I think that's why I'm here. I'm here to bring that different spin to it, um, taking on the passion and pretty much really tapping into the passions of people that I work with. I mean, I, I've got, like I said, we mentioned Sam earlier with his distasteful comments, Chris, you need to filter those <laughs> things out. But more so like, you know, I, you know, chatting to Sam about, you know, with the marketing side of things, Chris, you know, he's popped up then. Um, with like the medical side of things, you know, we've got our track manager. There's just so much that happens that I don't know if anyone realizes, and I definitely didn't. And you know, joining halfway through a season, you're in at in amongst it all. Come the end of the season, it's a deep breath, but let's get ready because it's going to start again in a few months. And I think that's a key one to pick up. I'm going to jump around a little bit, and I'm going to bring George onto the to the four here. Sorry, that scared you then, didn't it? Really? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but just to pick up on that point that that Rich made there is that you'll know this even if it wasn't always directly you you'll know as well as i do is that historically what we've got as a team here and steve weston included as well used to be kind of almost done by by like one person would have to do everything sales marketing and and events and and this is the year that the the circuit have put this structure in place where all of you have got responsibilities but then come together as a team yeah definitely and it's like Kind of where I sit is a little bit in between sometimes work time. But we all work together. That's the main thing. It's like, like Rich is saying, preparing for the events for next year and stuff now. And it's like getting ideas out. And we're meant to be having like a meeting coming soon about the events and everything we think like we all want to add to it and come up with a plan for next year. But then it's like a rolling thing, isn't it? If if it doesn't, if we can't get it for this year, it's what's for next year. And then my side, I see is like customer feedback and all of that kind of thing. And looking at what other people do and how we can really like get ourselves into the market and yeah, do the best we can. Which makes sense. And I guess it's fair to say, George, is that obviously you've been around the circuit yeah. all of your life yeah. uh, in reality, which means that you've got a passion, you've got an understanding 
and you're now sort of like learning on the job to be able to make it make it your own you know to bring your own ideas to it with the with the advice of the team as well yeah definitely i've, I've been working there this is so yeah this is my fifth year would be like in august i think right since i started so yeah it's been like a lot of stuff and a lot of things i've been thinking about and obviously with covid and stuff like hmm. that really yeah that was really eye-opening just having like track days and stuff like carrying the business and stuff for a while and but then it's been like yes yeah, like so it was like yeah for, for me i kind of missed out on the season there um yeah. and then yeah it's been like yeah nice to just like get the ball rolling really and i think definitely with like yeah max and rich would be like yeah we've got a good team so and i know that you and i we caught up and had a, a good drink at the uh the awards under the yeah last year didn't we that was good. are you, are <laughs> yeah. you at this year this weekend yeah yeah I'm, I'm there on saturday yeah we were it was the future ends one as well i remember we were on the same table weren't we that's right yes yeah. we were <laughs> That, I, I remember that. That was almost the first. Was that the first awards you'd been to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you I've were quite, you were quiet to start with, and then you just sort of <laughs> realised that, oh no, I can relax and enjoy this. And that's the yeah. beauty of the circuit is that everybody. I know you guys are the family, but it is like an extended family, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially for me, like I've grown up there and stuff. And but it's just like you see both sides, and it was like we were talking about how like events used to have like a big marquee with like gaming in it. I remember that from being a child, and like. Yeah. Thinking about how we get there again, isn't it? And the same with Max as well. Good, he's been like he's been to a lot of events and stuff, and he knows about like some like displays we've had on track and stuff. So it's like yeah, well, just trying to work all together. And I've got to say something to all of you guys to consider is that one of the things I remember as a child up at Quarry Corner is that we'd have various traders, especially after the British Grand Prix, that would rock up with stock they still had left from their sort of like trading things of like team merchandise and all this. And as a youngster, I used to have pocket money that I would go and spend on those things. So as well as the shop down at, at uh, on the start finish straight is get something at Quarry Corner. That would be wicked to have uh, a st the stalls up there as well. That's just my yeah, two definitely. pennies worth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's unimportant, but that's that. That's uh, one of the things. I'm going to jump back, Max. I will come to you in a minute, but I'm going to jump back to Rich because uh, I just thought it made sense to sort of follow on a couple of the things you said there, Rich. But um, how much do you think it's an advantage to not be initially emotionally invested in motorsport compared to a disadvantage? I've heard both sides of the argument, really. You're... you're you're not sort of biased, are you, at the moment? I think what what's good is seeing the opportunities that maybe aren't present to everybody if they're solely focused on racing. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've said to you, Chris, I said to the guys, there's a huge infield that I just want to play with. I got lots of options, ideas and stuff like that, you know, next to the massive solar field. But the actual space, <clears throat> not covered with solar panels, We there's a lot to be done for that. But... What I also have done is I've come to obviously nearly every event since I started building that passion. Like, you know, I've, I now care about motorcycles. You know, I have a favorite motorcycle racer. I have, uh, it better be Max. For this, I'll say it is Max, but I have been winding him up all day saying, I will did you know that he's King of Coom? Has he got the lap record though on a bike? No. No. Oh, uh, <laughs> as you can tell, we're all a lovely part of this family. Um, no, I, you know, but I've I've seen Max race, and whereas before I'd see motorcycles, and I'd be like, oh, okay, and I care a little bit more because it's, it's it's someone I know and it's someone I support. I'm support Max Simmons racing. Max Simmons the person. Jury's out, but <laughs> you know, and then I get a vested interest in like the the car racing because I see the passion, like Cat Cheryl and the team, what they put into it. I get to absorb that on the days when I'm at the racing where there isn't so much for me to do. It's more like a reconnaissance day for me. Like what can yeah. we add as a circuit? How can we boost the spectator and enjoyment of what's going on? And then as a result, you know, I through formula Ford and stuff with Luke Cooper and I'm now a fan of formula Ford and Luke, you know, it's like, it's those sort of things that it's not like I'm trying not to, but I'm very much easily pulled into to becoming a fan. But I think, Day one, it was very much like, right, okay, why don't we do X, Y, Z? I've learned about, you know, the noise restrictions on on what we can do and working with the local community has been a, a big thing that we're sort of building on for this year. But the, the thing I always say, like, everyone's got an idea for an event or something to add to an event, yeah. which makes my job both really easy and also really difficult. Because You can't please everyone, can you? You can't, you can't please everyone, but my job is to please as many people as possible. 
uh, with yeah. the events and stuff we put on. Uh, George touched on it then, you know, back in the day when you had like the PlayStation tents or gaming tents and stuff like that. Like, there's a need for these sort of things to come back. It's just how we do it, when we do it, where's there space? Like, as you know, like race days, the paddock is the prime area, fills up really quickly. So, you know, we have discussed trade at other areas, quarry, for example. Um, I was going to comment on your age because I was going to say, surely now all that stuff you're talking about would just be online. <laughs> I the clubs are clearing no, out, but as you said before we got on, like you're not that much older than me, so I'll be a bit no. quiet. Um, <laughs> it was just a tough paper round, all right? <laughs> but from, from from my perspective, I don't think it's a, a positive or a negative. I think it's an opportunity. Um, as I, I can say no, and I'm not necessarily tied down to things like, you know, a phrase, we've always done it that way, or that person has always done that, or we've always used this supplier yes. and stuff like that. I think... What I get to do is I've got a whole network of anyone to supply everything. What works best from a value perspective, from an experience perspective. So that's what I sort of been able to do. I mean, I really enjoyed the Autumn Classic this year. Uh, you know, I even got made to dress up, um, which is my favorite thing. But something like the Autumn Classic is such a an established event. It was like, well, what what can I do to it? And you know, I work really hard to make sure we had that Lotus display. That sort of thing happens already. I made sure we had a nice hospitality offer. I, I, it's the team effort guys, but it's all me. Um, <laughs> we, you know, we made sure we had the stage with entertainment and into like, you know, there was a lot that builds into 2024 based on what worked, what didn't work, you know, but ultimately it's, we turned a corner this year, I think with spectators numbers and stuff like that, like responding to feedback, which I'm sure George will touch on. And as a result, like the event um, attendance skyrocketed. So it was like, right, okay, people do want to come. We will entertain them when they're here. And like I said, as we move into 2024, I feel my job is to give George too many things to promote and advertise and yeah. constantly knocking on his door and be like, George, I've got another thing. I've got another idea. And at the same time, George, Max, Steve, I'll list off everyone I've met since I started, always has that idea as well. Why don't you try this? We used to do this. It was really popular. What, um, why don't you bring the minis back? Like, you know, I, I can't count the number of times that phrase has been said, but people care. People are really interested in what we do. And, you know, as a management team, it's our job to to provide that to them. Steve's element to that is obviously a bit boring where it's just making sure it's safe. <laughs> it's got it's got to be done i mean just to put this up paul, paul, uh, paul wilch has put up a comment saying a cafe reinstated at old paddock would be good and how i've got i don't know whether you guys are aware of this george you'll remember it uh is below the commentary box at old paddock there used to be a cafe where people would buy drinks and stuff like that something that that way i agree with the comment so uh, i'll I, hence i've put that up there for you guys to be aware of because otherwise you've got quarry and then where is it? Is the the next place is round at um, Bobby's, I think, isn't it? Before you can buy any food or drink or anything like that. Yeah, pretty so, much. Yeah, so that's another one to put out for you there, guys. Um, but equally is where did uh, Andy Bisping? Andy, so good to work with Andy at the uh, the, um, the 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 sprint that was there. Uh, really enjoyed working on the stream with him. Welcome to. Uh, all the new team as we know is not that new anymore <laughs> fresh ideas and an exciting future and i agree that's the uh the beauty of it uh emma brown says welcome to the family to you all and she's happy because you mentioned about formula ford rich so she's more than happy <laughs> so that's that's fine um and peggy spackman says evening hi late join us sorry on behalf of fudge to you and slip and grit because and again some of the trainer uh, traders that are there um, I do like the fact that Chris Mason put is this Wiltshire's most wanted. It probably does look a bit suspect, doesn't it, at the moment? <laughs> Caroline Sutton, evening, Caroline. We'll see you Saturday by the sounds of it. Um, bless you. Uh, evening all there. Here's an interesting one, and I'm not sure who this is, and it might um, change who we put this to, but John Creech, evening, putting my work hat on. Have you been able to take learning from experience, not just from non-motorsport events, which, Rich, you clearly have, but events from other circuits as well that are motor racing, such as Brands Hatch, who have had successful events to see how Coombe can undertake something similar. Now, Rich, I guess that you've got to take learning from them, but not just copy them. Oh, yeah, very much so. I think, you know, again, George sort of mentioned it earlier. We 
sit in a very open environment on what other people do, what works, what doesn't work. That can promote best practice. And at the same time, you can think, well, hang on, that sort of thing could work at Castle Coombe in a Castle Coombe way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we have space. We've got, you know, open fields, like, you know, a lovely track. There is opportunities. And, and some things aren't necessarily completely groundbreaking, out of the box thinking. I mean, they're, again, for a discussion for another time, I need to bring them up with others before I let you know. But we've just gone through like a uh, firework season, yet the circuit lends itself to firework displays and things like that. So, you know, there's there's talk of how we do that, but also in the context of 2023, 2024, do we look to do quiet displays? Do we make it more open uh, for more people to attend and enjoy themselves? Like, you know, there's there's a lot of, of that sort of thing. And we, I mean, you know, before I started, I looked at what other fest- other circuits did and you got Silverstone's Festival with music and on track and off track action and all that kind of stuff. Like, we, we set ourselves quite well where we, we have a lot going on in our season. Um, so, we, you know, there's there's always scope to do more. Um, but one of, one of the things I'm, I'm working on uh, is our off season. So for Christmas 2024, um, you know, there's there's a million and one things we can do, like, you know, no, no promises. But we'll be looking at, you know, Christmas. Is it Christmas market r- route? Is it like an ice rink at the track? Is it? You know, using the spaces that we have for like local Christmas parties for businesses. Um, someone's approach to hire like some of the Strawford Centre spaces for like reef building, making reef yeah. reefing, um, <laughs> like those sort of things. So I think you know, th- there is there is a lot in the pipeline, and every day, like I said, I'll have an idea, or someone will have an idea, and then I wander up and speak to Max or George or Graham, and I you know I'll say, look what do you think of this to have the conversation with people that you know i could work with on it so yeah i think you know looking at what the other circuits do i'm sure they're looking at us you know like they'll see what we do they we're popular we've got a lot going on lots of different things so yeah it's a it's 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 something we do and it's something that we'll continue to do no i understand that uh, i'm going to come to max in a second but george listening to all of that that's got to be good news that actually when they're knocking on your door to say there's even more that they want you to be promoting that's music to your ears surely yeah definitely and a lot of my stuff is probably more like market research and stuff like that where i do look at events and stuff and it's like trying to grow the business like compared to other events and other circuits and similar things like there's like obviously you've got huge scope in motor racing like motorsport in general but i think it's like yeah we've got like different tiers of like Max obviously being a racer, like he's really into his motorsport and he knows like all these circuits really well. I've not been I've, this year was the first time I've been to any other circuit apart from Cosby. Oh this, really? Yeah. So it's kind of like I'm the yeah, like it's still like it's one of those things where I'm probably still like growing my interest. Like I've done a few driving experiences now. I've like yeah, not yet got a track car, but I've got a friend who's very keen. So <laughs> it's like getting more into it. And it was a bit like, yeah, I don't stuff like when you had like Paddock life on and stuff like that. It's all just fun to like just get to know what the scene's a bit more like, really. And absolutely, yeah. but but equally to you, I guess it's repeating that comment is that to learn from these other venues, but not just yeah, copy well, them, is it exactly? And what we do is we do like good stuff and we've got a cool customer base who really like what we do, and it's just it's trying to like yeah, work out the best for everyone, really. Well, I've always had a thing wherever I'd be commentating, the amount of times that I'd get comments, they go, what is it that Coombe does so different? Because they've always got big crowds. Uh, we'll come on to that side in a second. But it, it, it just always, for, for since I was five years old, it's always been a big crowd. Whereas I can go and commentate some other circuits and I sometimes feel like I'd be better off going and sitting next to them and telling them what's happening. You know, if there can be that few. That is like something that we've learned this year though george we can't take for granted either no yeah and yeah but then it's like it's what we see like how like what does costco like suit itself most towards and that's like the yeah. style of the circuit and that kind of thing like classic car racing has been exceptional this year it hasn't We're, just yeah and, all the, and, and the bikes probably. the bikes will yeah. get lots and our local championships will get lots with some special events thrown in I mean, they're very varied, aren't they, our, our, our fans at the circuit? That's for sure. 
Yeah, definitely. And it's like just trying to bring it all together. We've got like a media day planned and stuff this year, and it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah, what we can do. I'd imagine we'll be running live with this there as well, uh, with uh, with some kind of show like we did uh, last year. Yeah, definitely. Well, I've been threatening to do this, so I will do it at last, Max. <laughs> so we can put you up big now, so we can see your trophies in the background there, mate. <laughs> I had to get them in the shot, didn't I? Hundred <laughs> percent. Even if it's just to, to 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 sort of make Rich tut and nod his head and what have you. Is um, that a Christmas tree, Max? <laughs> yeah, I can see the reflection in the trophy there. Yeah. I think, Max. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I've been the master of the office because everyone's heard that uh, the tris- Christmas tree's gone up in my house and everyone's very appalled. Um, but yes. I, I had nothing to do with it, so uh, don't blame oh, me. <laughs> that old chestnut, that old chestnut. <laughs> But Max, uh, and I've got, I know all of you have been putting comments in and I will come to them because there's some good comments and good questions and I will come to it. Before we do that, Max, let's touch on the fact that you literally live a stone's throw away from the circuit. You were already having success as a motorbike racer. And then lo and behold, you join as a commercial manager at the circuit. I mean, how did that come about? Yeah, kind of, it all kind of just fell into place. I, um, yeah, I'm not not from around here originally. I'm um, from down in Somerset, but I moved to Chippenham two and a half years ago. Um, and yeah, it was kind of just just a bonus that Castle Coombe happened to be down the road, and it was convenient when um, there are track days and races on. Um, and I, I always kind of thought, oh, yeah, it'd be nice if a job just happened to pop up at Coombe. It'd be like it'd be like the dream scenario. And then all of a sudden, I think it was January this year. I was just scrolling on Facebook and ping. There was the advert, and I was like, well, got to go for it. Uh-huh. And, and here I am. <laughs> what were you doing beforehand? Uh, so I was doing digital marketing, uh, mostly for Jaguar Land Rover, uh, Shell and Tesco. Um, so I did that oh. for about five years. And then I was doing sort of more event marketing before that for likes of um, Ferrari and DHL and Patronus and a few others. Um, so yeah, quite quite a few different brands, but it's mostly on sort of the, the marketing and um, yeah promotion side. I think he's trumped you again there, Rich, to be honest, mate. Wow. That's what I try and do on a daily basis. You've got, you, you got to keep him down. You can't, can't let him feel too good. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, how, I mean, obviously, you, you, different to what we've just been saying, to certainly to Rich, for example, where he's come in from outside of the sport, you were already a petrol head. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, two wheels, but do you have uh, uh, an enjoyment of four wheel racing, or was that new to you? <laughs> To, to be honest, be- before I um, joined Coombe, it, it's always been purely two wheels for me. It has been, you know, for my entire life. I think m- my dad started racing motorbikes when I was sort of one, two years old. Um, so I've been in the racing paddock around the country every year that I can remember. Wow. Um, but yeah, on on the car side is where it's it's kind of new for me. And, and yeah, coming into Coombe is where I've, you know, suddenly learned a lot more about it and got to see a lot, you know, a lot of cool cars. Um, but yeah, before that, it's always it's always been bikes for me, and you know I've I've always got half an eye on where I can uh, bring a bring a few more bikes to Kim, get a, you know a bit more two wheeled action out there. And I don't think that will be met with resistance. I have to be <laughs> honest; it always gets a big crowd there. But I mean, that means that your two worlds have collided with your professional work, your your two wheel mm-hmm. racing, and then still had more to learn on the four wheel stuff to bring it all together to bring your you know, as commercial manager, and I know you've been working incredibly hard on things such as sponsorship. What else do you get involved with doing before we move on to sponsorship discussions? So it, it's a little bit of, of everything, really. You know, there's there's a commercial aspect to everything that happens at Coombe. You know, although, you know, people see it as a circuit and, you know, an event venue, it is, in essence, a business. So there's a commercial aspect to everything. So, you know, that can be, you know, how we hire out the track to third parties and, you know, who we who we choose to hire it out to but also you know the things that we run at, at the circuit as well that's not just you know our big events but you know we have we have track days we have experience days you know we have rally school there's lots of different things that the the, the circuit can offer as well um and then there's there's a lot of work in, internally i suppose just looking at you know how, how do we operate how do we do things and how can we make that more efficient how can we how can we make the circuit more profitable with, with the end goal of you know, having more money to then invest in the circuit for the future. You know, we have, I think it's fair to say, quite big plans for where, where the circuit's going to go, but that can't happen unless we, you know, generate more income to fund it. That was the irony, wasn't it? People were sort of like, uh, I mean, especially when there was some uh, talks of what some of the things that may happen. 
And it was like, well, how's that going to be funded? You, you, it can't just suddenly appear. Now, Robin Nathan, uh, you know, he's he's made a comment. I'm not going to put your full comment up, Robin, but uh, I'm going to bring it up. And, and he's talking about things like the presentable side of the circuit. And I know that you guys and Steve Weston have been working very hard on that. It's just sort of like dragging it up by its boots, isn't it? So that it sort of looks clean and fresh. Yeah, definitely. I think Castle Coombe, as far as circuits goes, has, has one of the best histories out there. Um, but it, it is fair to say that the circuit at the moment is a little bit tired, particularly when you compare it to the likes of, you know, Silverstone and Donington and other circuits that aren't, aren't that far away. And, you know, we completely realise that. And and Steve Weston has been working really hard over the past few months yes. to create, a, I guess what you call a mega list of, of all the tasks to be done around the site. You know, anything from refurbishing the toilets to repainting to, you know, building building new infrastructure all these different kind of things so yeah it, it, it's all on the plan what we've got to do now is make sure that we do it at a pace that is affordable to the circuit and that wherever possible we bring in more income so that we can we can speed that up and you know customers can start seeing the benefits sooner um it's always a little bit of a, a catch-22 you know we want to offer a better products but that requires more money but we can't you, you know realistically it's not bit, is yeah it? We, yeah and you know we can't just charge people more money on the promise that we're going to give them better value in future you know we it's got to be up front yeah i think you know sort of um prior to us you know starting as a management team there was you know decisions made to um raise raise the prices for a lot of things and it i think it's you know we're in agreement that it, it was probably jumping the gun a little bit and you know we kind of hadn't given people more value we were, we were charging them more which obviously didn't go down very well and you know we listened to that and and backtracked on it and we you know we've um, just recently this week, been looking at prices for next year and ensuring that they're they're still um, affordable um, and they're still attractive to people to make sure that people are still coming to the circuit. Yeah, I mean, uh, picking up on something you said there, Max, is that what's really tricky is that you you say compared to and you use Silverstone, Donington, whatever as 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 examples, but we cannot lose fully our our heritage at Castle Coombe. You know, George and I that have been involved with the circuit for in various ways, myself as a fan since five and last whatever it is, eleven years as a commentator, etc., is that it's got that sort of traditional feel to it. However, you can't give in to everybody saying, but that's the way it always has been as well. And it's a very fine line, isn't it? it yeah, it is you know it, you're right, it's it's a balancing act. You know, we want to we want to modernize things and make sure that we're giving people the best experience possible. But like you say, we don't want to lose what makes Identity. Castle, Coombe, Castle Coombe. You know, there's yeah, yeah, you know, the spectating at Castle Coombe, uh, you know, I'd say that is probably second to none. And you know, again, if we were to compare that to Silverstone, the views you get at Castle Coombe, you'd be probably paying a thousand pound plus a ticket to get that kind of view at Silverstone, or you just wouldn't be able to. So no. you know, there's a lot of there's lots of things that you you get at Coombe that you you don't get at any other racetrack. Um, so yeah, there's, yeah, like it, it is a balancing act and there's certainly a lot of things that are special about Castle Coombe. And I think that's, that's why we see that it still draws big crowds to, to pretty much every event. Whereas, you know, other, other racetracks that, you know, perhaps are a bit more modern struggle to do so. I hundred percent agree. And, and, and again, speaking from experience at working with them, but, uh, you know, if, events seems to be the thing that drives it which is where it all sort of comes that you guys are working together on this let me just catch up on a few comments first of all emma says we're not the uh, most wanted we're actually a boy band there you go i prefer emma's version of that you wouldn't want to hear me sing <laughs> <laughs> i thought one of those trophies was for you singing uh nick, give me one to start. <laughs> <laughs> nick holmes from club racing uk hello nick good to see you mate and good to see you guys are on the go again uh he says uh, club racing uk are looking forward to helping out where we can uh oh, tom cheeky uh john forty he's going to be coming on the show soon as well i guarantee you forty even and all to you mate um quickly go back goose up at quarry hard one of the quarry hardcore he's got a question are there plans to extend the fencing at the exit of Quarry? Now, I think that's a loaded question because I think he wants the answer to be no. But we, of course, had a wheel go up over the over the bank at the uh, last race meet, didn't we? Anything that you yeah, we did. yeah, which, yeah, which isn't great. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean it is Steve's area. I I know that we're looking at 
the the fencing around quarry and, and quite a bit of it is going to be getting replaced over winter um whether it's going to be extended and how far if so it's going to be extended to um yeah I, I i don't know off the top of my head i don't know so you'll have to wait yeah, that's George to yeah that george do you know the answer to that one or is that a steve weston question yeah it's all yeah steve weston question really i think it's budget that's depending fine. and every game signed off etc yeah <laughs> I thought I'd drop uh, drop you all in it anyway, uh, yeah, just so just in case. Rich one no more. Got <laughs> <laughs> me in it. Yeah, I, go on. We, actually, we've dropped everyone in it. I actually, uh, I don't know exactly where, but there is extending to catch fencing uh, in certain areas. I think that might be quarry, but right. um, you know, I, I come in a similar time in the morning as Steve, and we'll sit and have a coffee and fencing and stuff. Although it's super important. I need that coffee before everything's with yeah. <laughs> But no, like the like you know, touching on what the guy said about improving the look of Castle Coombe and trying to, you know, make it make it what we know it can be. Yeah. You know, I do hear conversations and stuff like that that, you know, we've we've just refurbed the toilet block, which for some people is the best thing ever. And for us it's that sort of the steps in the right direction. So, yes. you know, the investment into something like a toilet block is not exciting it's not you know it's not changing the feel of castle coombe but it is given that idea that identity that we are modernizing and just doing our best to do better whenever we can and and that always you know and i go back i've always whenever i'm hosting the castle coombe racing school which again i emphasize people if you're not done it get to the racing school you get to learn the racing lines and get out on the circuit but one of the things i say is that howard strawford is was just a, a hero of mine. I grew up 20 minutes down the road from the circuit originally in, in Yate Chip and Sobri area, um, or as Tom Davis calls it, the Cotswolds. Um, and uh, <laughs> oh. Oh. I think he's funny. <laughs> wow, left us. Yeah, did say <laughs> left us hanging a little bit. I don't know whether he's just had enough and gone home. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. There he is. I don't know what happened. It just spat me out. It obviously wasn't liking what I was saying for some reason. Um, the uh, sorry, the point I was about to make was that Howard Strawford is was one of my absolute heroes. Grew up Yate Chip and Sobri area, uh, Cotswolds as Tom Davis calls it, and um, fell in love with racing from five years old with my dad, and and just adored it. And one of the things he used to do, the reason why he's a hero, is that he would just work on something year after year after year and you just improve the safety the facilities the what we can attract all those kind of things and and i think that by the sound of it is is really what you guys are trying to do both from the physical circuit from what we've got going on there what we can attract which interestingly i've got a great comment here let me just find it again uh ben hayward makes the comment hugely missing the days george you must remember this yeah um of f3 british gts brick car etc is there a realistic chance of a large profile series returning please i think we can throw tcr in there as well now who should i be aiming that question at, out of you three i i mean to be honest i say it's probably more of a question for the racing club i think is but, it? Uh, yeah i would yeah. say we're always looking at you know what big series can can we get at the circuit a lot of the time it comes down to the noise restrictions we have you know yeah. Uh, pretty much all circuits in the UK have fairly strict noise restrictions, but I'd say we're we're at the uh, stricter end of it, which makes it difficult for those bigger championships because they are, I guess, more powerful and, and normally louder machines. Um, but yeah, there's definitely the racing club are working hard to to bring in a, a variety of different series and you know wherever we can some of those higher profile ones. But yeah, we are a little bit um, handcuffed with the with the noise limits that we have at the moment. What about, and, and I, I don't know how true this is, but there's often talk about, and again, I don't know who this question should go to, is uh, garages could make a difference, you know, pit, pit lane garages. Is mm -hmm. that something that you feel is a genuine difference maker? And is it something that you think we ever could address? Because I know that's not an, an, an easy fix. It's, it's definitely it's something that we've spoken about quite a lot in the past few months. And it's something that as a circuit we'd like to have in future and we'd like to be able to offer people um again it comes down to we need to first raise that income to be able to invest in it obviously you know once we've got it there then the, it it will help us make more money but up until that point we need to 
basically yeah make make a bit more profit keep this money aside so that we can then invest in it because it is you know it, it will be a it'll be a big expense so it's not the kind of thing that we can just um crack on with and do because we want to um we and do even want space to, is an it, issue yeah. as well space as well really yeah um but you know as rich mentioned we do have the infield which is kind of aside from the, the solar farm it is unused at the moment so you know there is a potential you could have a, a bridge or a tunnel and a, a pit complex on the inside um you know we're, we're kind of open to all possibilities at the moment it again it comes down to what what funding we can raise and and what what fits with you know the vision for for castle cleaning in the future because you know again like we were saying before we don't want to go too much the other way and and, and lose what makes castle Coombe castle Coombe. um but yes we're, we're definitely looking at pit garages and you know if we can if we can raise the funds then it's something that we'll look at doing yeah exactly so that was a good comment from from ben there uh putting more up alex hobbs says hi uncle max <laughs> from era so I said it right. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know whether to bring this one up or not. Uh, I will put it. Wasn't there advertisement of an outdoor cinema at the circuit? Did that happen? The answer is no. Let me take that another way. Is that likely to happen again? And I'm going to throw you under the bus for that one, Rich. No, not under the bus at all. We did have one um, planned in for, I think it was the August bank holiday weekend. And we've, I think one of the, biggest contributing factors to any outdoor venue let alone ours is the weather so one eye on the weather meant you know we had to postpone it we looked and looked and looked but it is it is coming back we're putting it hopefully into the august bank holiday of uh, 2024 and ironically you were properly stitched up because then the weather that was being forecast didn't bloom and appear did it and and this is the thing like you know everyone knows everyone says uh castle coombe circuit specifically has its own microclimate it could be raining <laughs> and we get sunshine it could be sunshine everywhere else and we get rain but you know it's, it's it's one of the challenges the thing like i've done outdoor cinemas before you you know you you make that stipulation unfortunately it's a definite possibility and then you know we we say that we'll do it earlier in the year because of the summer but look it's spring action day this year the weather we dealt with on that day before i started but the weather i heard people dealt with on that day like it's a stab in the dark. So some of that is popular. It was popular. It was really disheartening to have to postpone it. But that's the type of event where we we roll it out. It became popular. We know it's going to be successful. Um, and then open to feedback. Like, you know, like not even we haven't even done it, but how can we improve it? You know, what makes it how can we make 2024 better than what 2023 could have been? So it is coming back and other events like that. Like I said, I put that in the same sort of part as like fireworks. It's, it's yes. events that I feel like should be happening and, and some that will be. And you've got to run with it and, and know that it might not get the perfect numbers the first time because the word's got to spread. It's exactly that. Like I, I came in and I was, you know, it was very much like a let's do it. And like I said, the numbers, the numbers were there. It was a, it was three nights. I think we did three nights we yeah. were planning to do across that bank holiday weekend you know it's it's an easy sell to a point because you've got a catchment of race drivers and you know crews and stuff like that with you know on site on say the friday night or the saturday night it sort of lends itself to to be popular as well so yeah, yeah. yeah like you know we with that it's just one of those things where we're at the mercy of the weather uh, nothing else really stops <laughs> for the weather we we sort of crack on with everything i think at castle coombe but, but you one, know, that couldn't that one could it? That's one funny. of the ones where we don't have. I mean, you know, when when you talk about like covered facilities and stuff with garages and stuff, um, Graham, I think, said to me early doors, you know, if you could have one thing, what would it be? And I was like, you know, twenty thousand capacity warehouse slap bang in the middle of that infield, and I can have a great time. But you know, <laughs> you know like Max was, was saying, like, be great. We'd love that. We could use it for so many things, but it's a huge investment. You know, yeah. then you got to think bridges and tunnels and. All sorts of other bits that go alongside it but again who knows one day we've we've got the space we've got the determination the sort of drive to do more with it with what we've got and adding more to that so yeah agreed agreed um rob drew says any plans for tcr uk to come back as max said that's a, a question really for the racing club and and obviously um i'm kind of on the board for um uh, pr and media and I know that the answer to that would be, we hope so. Uh, there would certainly is a desire to bring that back again. But, 
it might it's not all it's not our call you know they they are doing uh, you know they're growing as a as a championship and and as a package in fairness but watch this space certainly from our angle we would uh, we would like to um uh Danny Wilson so this is your Danny Wilson is it Max it is yeah yes that is the Christmas tree I put it up when Max was at, was at work never too early yeah, so it, it started happening where if Danny has a day off in the week and I'm at work, I'll, I'll get home and the tree goes up. Um, but worryingly, it seems to be getting a week earlier every year. It um, does. But we're, we're getting to the, to the early November now, so I feel like we've got to be almost at the limit. I, I like, would agree. Hopefully. I Personally, I think, Rich, we were discussing earlier, he's way beyond that limit, isn't he? I'm a, I'm a big fan of Christmas. Um, my my wife will tell you, like, I... As soon as well, as soon as I see the first anything of Christmas, I start getting excited. But I feel like you can get Christmas burnout. So you know, I think yeah. the first of December, it's Christmas jumpers. It's you know, decorating the office, decorating the home. Like you know, I, um, the beard's growing a little bit at the minute because we I do was, like a I Christmas beard growing you. competition for the family. Uh, Chris, I might share with you the picture from a few years ago. It's got baubles, lights. Oh, my gosh. The full thing, and I'm quite competitive. So as soon as it was like, oh, we're growing beards for Christmas, I'm like, yes, excited. This is as Christmassy as it can get. I mean, we I said I said to Max today, like, you know, we had, a, a like, a long meet-in. We had, like, lunch, like, Mulio and stuff from Sainsbury's. And someone brought, like, the brie and cranberry Christmas sandwiches. And I'm like, That's, <laughs> it's November. It's just a uh, sandwich. Uh, and they have a max I would them. argue with that one. I, I love all the all, all the Christmas sandwiches. So yeah, that that all year round, I'd be happy with that. Anything with a bit of cranberry sauce in it, and I'm happy. But I agree with the Christmas burnout. It is all special. I keep trying to teach my 11 year old daughter that if if you have the good things all the time, they're not good things anymore. Yeah. Well, That's you're my <laughs> Well, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, George, what what's yeah. your say on this? When when should the Christmas tree go up? Do you think? Um, yeah, probably. I'm not too one. I'm not the one to put the Christmas tree or anything. But when you're working in marketing, you start thinking about Christmas. I think in the summer, don't you? So it's, <laughs> That's like, a good it's point. Like, that is a good. I point. heard a Christmas but... song a few weeks ago. Like as soon as October goes, like um, yeah, as soon as Halloween passes, they say like Mariah Carey starts melting, doesn't she? And yeah. Starts... <laughs> <laughs> you're very right, actually. And in fairness, the uh, the um, Christmas advert started around that sort of time yeah. that you mentioned as well and my wife was like oh my god that's just like ridiculous and i went well hang on a minute that they've only got two months to advertise that so from your perspective you need that time to be able to promote it black friday is the one as well it's like i've been saying oh we've got black friday coming up in a few weeks and everyone's like oh it's, it's next week isn't it i've been getting promotions for ages i'm like no it's it's like the 24th <laughs> is it really because i thought yeah. they were promoting it's this friday for some yeah, reason yeah no yeah, I've next lost Friday. track. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they start promoting as soon as November starts, I think. So. <laughs> Absolutely. And but, I'm going to yeah. bring Max on because our very own two wheel commentator, Martin Bennett, says, Hello, King of Coom. <laughs> Did you know that, Rich? I've, I've heard it. Yeah. Max, which one's your King of Coom trophy then? Or your. Oh, it's right to hand. Just, Brilliant. Yeah. Just make sure anyone can <laughs> get off the shelf for you. There it is. Or it's actually Did the. You... Um, did the you Rodney. feel under extra pressure to, to secure it for the second time running? Now you work here, though. So yeah, so the it, it was run over two rounds this year. So the the first yeah. meeting back in April was prior to me starting, um, but the second round was sort of six weeks into to me starting the job. So th there's always a lot of pressure going into Coombe anyway because it, it's the the local round. So a lot of you know friends and family will come and watch, and you know there's the chance to win King of Coombe. So it's it's always. It's always a bit stressful, but yeah, all of a sudden there was loads more people wanting to to watch and cheer me on as well. So yeah, cool. so it was a little bit more stressful. <laughs> um, everyone in the you... team probably said I was a lot more stressed, but and now Rich is yeah. a fan as well. No matter what he says, Rich is a max. You got a crown in your office. You bought it for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fairness, even Emma Strawford said our king. <laughs> there you go. So she's put a crown up as well. Yeah. Your yeah, um... Better right. half has said yes, more bikes at Coombe. That was from earlier when you said yeah. that she wants more bikes there as well. Always. I have to say, I adored you two uh, in the pit lane when the drift cars went out at the Halloween Action Day. You guys were just amazing. We were live on the microphone at that point, uh, and uh, you went out with the most berserk drift driver I have ever come across, and she was shaking on the pit wall. 
she was going out, but she thought she was going to be safe. Bless you, Danny. You thought you were safe with someone else, but you went out with the same one. But you guys just lapped that up. It, yeah, it was brilliant fun. It's um, yeah, you know, I've obviously done you know probably a thousand plus laps around the track on two wheels, but never really done any on four wheels. So yeah, to to go out and all of a sudden be a passenger in a car that's you know going 100 plus mile an hour completely sideways along the edge of the track was a a new experience but um yeah it was really fun and yeah thanks to, to Richie and Luca for organizing that that was bonkers really bonkers honestly I adored seeing you two worried about each other <laughs> uh worried about yourselves but enjoying <laughs> it so much and there wasn't even a hint that you were going to back out of it it was so impressive yeah you, you you've got you're on another level to be fair uh <laughs> Angela uh, good evening from Martin and I. So we had Martin and uh, Angela's Martin's better half as well, of course. Uh, this is an interesting one. James Downton says, be nice to have some sort of French cars up there again. I think that's probably for, for you, Rich. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is the, the, the classic I was speaking about earlier. Like, you know, people want to see anything and everything at, uh, at Coombe. I, I think, you know, as we, as we move forward, George, uh, working loads on you know the best sort of feedback options and stuff like that you know at the minute we do respond to like you know we get emails we've got our chat to us online that kind of thing but i think what we're looking to do is like again it's a, it sounds a bit of a cliche but we are always looking to evolve you know people want to see more french cars you know that's not the first time i've heard that comment but i've also heard as many comment for italian cars or an american action day or you know a motorcycle action day you know that sort of vibe yeah, yeah, the yeah. motorcycle show not just a, a race day and stuff i mean i I'm... what about merging the two i keep bringing this up even with the racing club as well is that and we see it a lot with uh with msv do a lot where they kind of almost merge that action day slash race day together where there is a theme for the day and there's as much off track as there is on track which is exactly what we're aiming to do for 2024 uh we We've always done it with Autumn Classic. I think that's where you merge the two style of events where you have a yes. racing day. It's, you know, Autumn Classic is, is a race day and off the field we do a showcase of as many classic cars as we can and that sort of classic uh, trade village, you know, those sort of things where they go hand in hand. So again, going back to working with Ian and Cap through the racing club, like bringing in George's experiences, working with Max, like Autumn Classic is the catalyst for how, you know, we want to, entertain as much off the field uh, off the track sorry as we can on the track yeah well so we have you know when when those conversations are okay what sort of um visitor racing do we have okay say we you know as i say we had a particularly high french contingent of racing in one of the series we do then yeah french cars will be something that we try and promote to get the club sort of look off track as well so yeah those sort of things now we've got this team it is a bigger team it's the things that people have said and thought about and what we've noticed is now our opportunity to do that and 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 i guess there's a chicken and egg thing there though and i know there's not an easy answer because i know how hard steve weston used to have to work as the competition's secretary or director which whatever the title was and ian danaher there now is by the time they get the race dates to try and secure the things to actually have a theme to it can be quite tricky whereas if there's that ability to kind of go right well let's make this a french day an italian day let's make i mean i get i go and uh, commentate on mini action uh, mini festivals uh which is another one that obviously some people are upset has disappeared as an action day um italian festival deutsch fest you know and and so it goes and that that's the races on track predominantly it's it's just not easy to sort of like pull the two things together at the same time though is it well, it's it's not and also like you know we say about the time constraints one of the things we've worked on this year is to get like our schedule to the racing club as quick as possible to try and give them that opportunity to pull in the more i don't know the more spectator worthy races and stuff like that like the tcr conversation was great that was a conversation we were having and you know unfortunately it wasn't something that we we're going to do for 2024 but we're not out of that conversation for for 2025 you know like so it's yeah, yeah. You know, we 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 having the racing club is is one of the best things I think we have as a as a circuit. I think like you know the the passion again from them, but giving them the tools, like giving them the opportunities and earlier scheduling and you know trying to get as many people in because the more people that come in, it helps match the more sponsorship opportunities, the yeah. more 
you know, it's it's that classic where it sort of goes, you know, hand in hand. I mean, we, I mean, it, it, it makes me think of, uh, I don't know if you guys know Nick Wood from Pegasus Sprint. Yep, yep. And I chatted with Nick very early doors. It was someone I met and he's a character, like, but he's someone like I lean on him for conversations and tutelage in a way. But like the way he talks about, like, you know, you could get this person, this person, this race series with this race series, and you'll be doing this. Like, you know, he gets an understanding, and it it's those sort of people that Nick's involved through Pegasus and has a long history with the circuit. But it's then, you know, when you listen, when you have those conversations with Kat and Ian and be like, oh, you know, Nick's, for example, has mentioned this, 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 yeah, we chatted to them about this, this is an option. But, you know, they all, it's all there. And I think, yeah. you know, as, as, as with us, it's like helping the racing club as best as we can. And like I said, you've got some really great people working in that team. Hopefully what we're doing is, is boosting that and, and helping that get more, get more attractive, you know, joined up thinking. I think that's what people can take excitement about. That's what I like the sound of. And, and George, you know, again, going back to our history of uh, both growing up at the circuit is that you must remember as much as I do is that not just the action that was going on on circuit, but when you walk through the car parks and if there was like, ferrari races for example there would be people rocking up with their road going ferraris parked in the thing and it was just as much fun to wander through the car parks wasn't it yeah yeah definitely it's yeah quite a long time ago now for, for me in a way as well <laughs> so, yeah, <true>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're, we're definitely getting there like autumn classic this year we're like getting back towards it and it's i think that's the thing for us this year it's like that's, i think like Rodney was obviously the one who was really good at like bringing in these car clubs and stuff like that so yeah it's like get back towards that so yeah agreed and, and that's that's what i'm thinking is the car clubs and the, the racing is that that's the, the the joined up bit isn't it yeah and yeah i think that's something we want to try to get to more this year like building up our race meetings to be like events as well and just doing the best we can no i i agree with you there um not sure who this question will go to it's probably another steve one but i'm going to put it up and again, this is just the, the opportunity for people to speak about it. The toilet block at the exit of Quarry has been closed since COVID. I'm going to throw you, Max, at that one, but I think it's a Steve Weston one, really. Does that yeah. mean anything to you? So, yeah, the, the management and refurbishment of all the toilets is something that Steve's looking at. And the the intention is to refurbish and, and open all, all the toilets around the site. What we're doing, or I say what, what Steve is doing, is... is working on them in priority order so um the first one that's been done is the one that's at the back of folly which is you know by the the main entrance of bluegate um so that's the, that's the the toilet block that's most used so that's the refurbishment on that is pretty much finished um and from there we'll be moving around the other toilets around the site over winter and the, um the following season to to yeah to, to, to do the same thing across the site again it comes it comes down to we we want to make the improvements but there's a there's a cost associated with it so we kind of have to stagger it a little bit and the way that, that steve's doing that does make sense and we'll focus on the ones that people use the most first and yeah. then we'll we'll work our way around the rest um so and, yeah and that's what i'm I, you know again i put it up sort of like going look guys you know take massive confidence from all of this is that it's so good to hear everything that is going on and there are there are people in place to do this which you know again put up colin porter's comment Great to see the progress at Castle Coombe and hear the future plans. And that was one of the other things I wanted to do. I want to introduce the the, the, the personalities here, but mm-hmm. also to, to sort of like see the work that has already gone in and that is going on and the, and the you know, the, the, the different roles, but the teamwork and everything else that's going on is really, really exciting. I love this that uh, your other half, Danny, said, the panic on your three faces when I disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. So there was just <laughs> silence for a second. We all like, oh no, what do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you yeah, mentioned, you yeah, mentioned was say, before we all started chatting, and it was like, oh, I'll, I might dip out or something, but no one can you've hear like what gone you're saying blue. or something. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> really dramatic. So much like, no, he's just gone and left us here. Like, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> you were safe. <laughs> you were safe. Uh, oh, and uh, Karen. Uh, has said quarry catch fencing is going to extend 20 plus meters so there you go that's the that's the answer to that one um and baldrick brian says evening gin master evening mate uh we are smashing the refurb on the circuit glad to hear it 
I'm not the gin master anymore. The problem is, is that the current Mrs. Dawes that normally replenishes me is watching Bake Off with Diddy Dawes downstairs. So I don't get the <laughs> the attention I'm used to, sadly. Um, okay, I'm interested on this question, and I don't know who this is aimed at, really. Um, Paul Wiltshire says, is there dialogue with the local authorities regarding noise? Who does that go to? You? Me. Is it? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, you know, I've been sort of working on the noise thing in previous jobs. Um, okay. You know, um, I, I I used to work at UWE, uh, the French A campus next to the MOD, next to a massive um, residential area. So, you know, I, I get, students can be quite noisy as well as race cars and stuff like that. So what you're talking about, mate. Well, that's, this this was always the argument. Like, and you, know, <laughs> you, you want to please everybody. That's what I said earlier. Like, you know, in the, in the events where you want to try and please everybody and, and that kind of thing. And I think we do have a very good sort of open, open dialogue. We do. We met with them recently. Um, to talk about plans for 2024, to talk about how 2023 had been and planning in regular, you know, pre-season, mid-season, end of season sort of catch-ups as well as, you know, opening up ourselves to have those conversations if something happens that requires a conversation beforehand. I think, you know, Castle Pume Circuit is not the big bad guy, but if you live next to the circuit, it, we can definitely come across that way. We have busy events and access is generally through country lanes or you know, B roads and stuff like that. So we do our best to mitigate the impact. You know, we release to the to the local residents what's happening and when, you know, like to, to try and prepare for it. We take on feedback. I mean, I don't know if you know, with the traffic lights we have for Action Day, yeah. we have a traffic light system to get in. We know how busy those roads can be. We've had some feedback about turning off the traffic lights between a certain time when it's not so busy. And it was like, okay, so I mean, we don't, see the impact because we're all inside dealing with <laughs> everything yes. that's going on. But it's that sort of thing where we do, We it's not just the noise, it's the it's the overall uh, impact as well. Uh, I mean, we had the bike night. I think, you know, Max will smile, George will smile, everyone will smile, but <laughs> that was a bike night and a half. We, <laughs> Rob Jones, you know, shout out to Rob, uh, all his support with the bike stuff. He came to us and was like, I want to bring back bike nights. I'm not going to try and do his accent. And I was like, okay, um, what, what, what does that look like? Rob, what's, what's a bike night? And he was like, effectively, Castle Coombe becomes a car park. People park up their bikes, have a talk about it, have some food, uh, you know, some trade stands. If any, I was like, brilliant. I was like, free entry thing? He's like, yeah, people shake a bucket for a charity. That's pretty much it. Great. First night, July, middle of July, brilliant. Castle Coombe. Stacked, Coombe. Stacked wasn't it? Absolutely wet down. Better watch my words then. Karen watching. Um, so it was absolutely <laughs> disgusting weather-wise, and 60 bikes turned up. I don't think I've ever seen Rob so happy when I saw him. He was like, I'll take that. 60 bikes in this weather. We get a little bit of that good weather, Rich. You'll, you'll get about 300 in here. And I was like, 300? He was like, all right, 250. And I was like, cool. Next month, we did it. Um, we had a really successful, like, you know, after the price changes and stuff, we had a really successful race meeting on the Monday, the bank holiday Monday, Steve Weston, even saying quarry and camp busiest he'd seen it in years and stuff. The bike night on the Wednesday, two, 300 bikes were there half an hour before it officially started. Yeah. Um, half an hour later, I think we're upwards of a thousand. Um, we the look on, I mean, Rob was like Christmas day. <laughs> that was my first touch of Christmas was Rob coming down a kid seeing all the presents under the tree. But from an events perspective, I was like, you know, this is something I'm going to have to manage with the locals tomorrow. On site, no noise. You know, people have parked their bikes up. But yeah. The noise motorbikes make to and fro and in that volume and stuff. That's the thing where we talk to them. We've met with them. It's, you know, next year, they we want them to continue. They're a great tool. It's obviously something our customers want. It's not a massive commercial entity. It's a great marketing opportunity. But from a commercial perspective, it's not really there, but it is something our customers want. So we have to manage numbers. We have to manage, you know, when we do it. Because we do it on the back of a bike track day at the minute. So bikes all day going around the track yeah. makes sense because everyone was there. Like, you know, but then there's other days we can do it. We've got quieter days. We had a Tesla day recently. It was very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> very weird. 
had a few people on the marshals because they're not used to the the quietness on the track and stuff. But you know, it's about smart thinking for those sort of things to happen. And we are allowed loud days. We have our race a certain amount of race meetings each year that we're allowed to be louder on and stuff like that. So there is an open dialogue. It's a constant. um, Well, and and then interesting, interesting question. Sort of like taking it further is and. I'm going to answer this partly, but I'm going to put it up as it is. James uh, Harridge says, can I ask why you run events like drifting, which are horrendously noisy for a circuit, which has a noise problem? It baffles me. Point one, I will say, is that the drifting, and I'll come to the noise pit in a second, is that the reason that's on, James, is that you should see at the action days is that people just suddenly appear from the pit, the paddock everywhere and they're glued to it because the entertainment factor is amazing. Max knows it. He's been out in one now as well. Uh, is just incredible. But how? let me turn that around instead of it being an opinion of drifting to how do you manage that that is something that does noise? Is that down to the fact that there is a limited number of them? The noise testing is done through, uh, again, from a learning perspective only. I've I've not spent a lot of time with the noise guys and stuff. Like, you know, it's it's engine revs and from a certain distance, a certain amount of revs, and, yeah. and you know, we, we have that limitation and stuff like that on it. The, the thing about drifting is it is spread out around the track. Yes, so you course. don't get, like, five cars drifting at one point. And, you know, it's... And there's only 10 on circuit. Movement. Any 10 on circuit any one time is the maximum as well. And they are spread out and it's like you know it's i think camp is where they get the biggest drift as they cover the whole paddock in smoke and stuff like that so it wherever you are it's going to be horrendously noisy uh using uh james's words there like you know it does get loud in certain areas at certain points it's not sustained it's not the constant noise the whole time they're out there and if it is it's it is intentionally spread out around the track well, compare that to suddenly say thirty cars on a grid arriving at, at you know quarry at the same, exact the same time. Is that you're right? Is that James? It's sort of like it is that spread out. So well done, Rich. That was a great way of answering it. Now I'm going to work my way through in a second through all of the comments and questions as the nice way to bring this to a close. But before we do that, Max, one of the areas I didn't cover with you is we touched on it: sponsorship. We mm-hmm. can announce my racing lab as one. And yep. there's multiple others that are on the way, but the one that we can talk about, My Racing Lab, speak to us about that. Yeah, so My Race Lab are a, a relatively new company, and they basically provide a telemetry and track mapping service or application. Um, so the or for anyone that doesn't know what telemetry is, it, it's kind of uh, data logging or tracking for what goes on on a car or, or on a bike. So you can um, plug a laptop into the machine and then you can see, you know, what gear uh, the, the driver or the rider was in around the track, what revs they were using, how much the suspension is traveling, how much the wheels are spinning. The idea behind it is that you can set up a car or a bike a lot better when you have this um, <clears throat> data to support the feedback that you get just from the, the driver or the rider. Um, so it's a really great tool. But as with a lot of things in motorsport, it's quite expensive. Um, and the more advanced it gets, the more tricky it becomes to uh understand it and use it just as yourself you what what you'll find is teams will uh be employing uh data logging specialists that will spend the whole weekend sat in front of a laptop you know reading lines on a screen um so so what that kind of means is that those that have bigger budgets and can afford to have the the latest you know data logging and the 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 most expensive um you know electronics experts suddenly have even more of an advantage than they would have had already over the the smaller more independent teams um where my race lab have come in is that they're trying to bridge that gap and offer a more affordable but also a more easy to use telemetry system meaning that those those people that are more independent and are on lower budgets actually have access to you know it's never going to be on the level of the you know the the super expensive stuff but it, it it gives you a bit more of a fighting chance and it's it's something that you can actually get your head into it and and work on yourself um so and that that's the product that they've they've launched this year they uh, approached us and were interested in you know collaborating with the circuit and and seeing how we could help them get their brand out there and get um get in front of, of more racing drivers um and the the clear benefit of Castle Coombe is that we have our own racing club with our own dedicated racing championships. 
Um, so that was kind of what we we put forward to them is, you know, by becoming a sponsor, you can get involved in, in all the racing events. You know, you can be present in the paddock. You can interact with the drivers and the teams, show them the product, get them using it, but also then be on hand to support them with using it as well. So, you know, I, I think that that's that's one of the key things is that it's not just uh, a plus for them in terms of they're getting good advertising and they're getting more customers, but there's there's real value for the the drivers and teams that uh, are part of the Castle Coombe Racing Club because they now have access to this this new tool and people on hand to help them out for free um which is something that you wouldn't get anywhere else um and that that's kind of something that we're we're trying to build with all our sponsorships and partnerships is that it's more than just a company paying money to have some advertising boards up to promote their business you know that that might be part of it but what we're looking for is is partnerships where those third party businesses that are coming in add value to the circuit as well um and and whilst um unfortunately we can't discuss any of the others at the moment because we haven't um we haven't announced them yet but we've got sort of half a dozen other um sponsors and partners that have come on board um offering a a, you know a range of different services you know be that from uh providing fuel um don't give it away now max you're gonna give that's all right don't worry i won't make many (laughs) names but um yeah we and we've got um you know supercar companies we've got um I guess what we call uh, prototype um, car companies as well that are partnering with the circuit to help their testing and development. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of exciting companies that are coming in. That was in. well covered, that one, Max. I'm yeah, impressed thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, you know, keep an eye on, on the Castle Coombe socials over the next um, month or two, because there'll, there'll be a lot to announce. And, you know, it, it's still November, so we're still looking to, to bring um, lots more on board as well. Um, but yeah, always with that aim of not just, you know, paying the circuit to to advertise but actually bringing some value to the circuit as well and helping us along that well along this journey that we're kind of at the start of with you know improving and, and modernizing um what we have to offer no they are some super exciting ones there that's for for sure um okay let me try and whip through some of these comments or questions uh john creech i, I think the answer is probably a no to this one but he says wonder what the art of the possible is with having a grandstand with shelter as there is no shelter which could be above any fencing this would go down quite well that's a big ask isn't it it, it yeah it, it is um but that being said it, it's something that we have spoken about and it, it's something that you know it's not off the cards but unfortunately it, again it comes down to the same thing of we need the funding to do so you know yeah. there's lots of there's lots of improvements and changes and things that we want to bring to the track, but all of those things cost money. And so they all kind of have to be prioritized. You know, we're, we're looking at the moment, like we mentioned about, um, you know, refurbishing the toilets, refurbishing other areas of the site as the the top priority to bring things up to, you know, a good standard. At that point, we're looking at, okay, what new investments can we make? But, you know, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be a, a, a long process, you know, three, four, five plus years where, you know, you'll start to see these different things come in um but yeah what i would say is you know castle coombe circuit in five years time would, would certainly look a lot different to how it does now agreed right um one for you rich uh sarah louise davis says hope there's a gap between the summer shows next uh year having summer action day forge action day and rs coombe which isn't the coombe run one is it the rs coombe one from memory no no uh, so that's we, a, a private company yeah so that's external sarah louise so that's a different thing but uh with no gap between was expensive and put off a lot of people so yeah i mean like i said to you earlier we've been working on the schedule um last year i thought well, this year sorry it's last year to us <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> coming in and you know working it not knowing what to expect at these events and stuff it was very intense especially seeing the teams having to do something like that so you know we've we've i'm not going to say off the top of my head we have definitely haven't got two events sort of clashing and stuff like that like our dates are very close to being released and is done in a way this time it is definitely spread out with that in mind the two biggest events i'm sort of working on are autumn classic and rally day and they're one week after the other so some of the stuff I feel like you know I've obviously upset somebody. Different um, audience though, that very is different audience is huge workload. But no, in, in all seriousness, it is something that you know, chatting to the team in the office, it was very much like a we we have to 
move our events sometimes as we're putting this schedule together for so many varying factors it's yeah you know we've we've got to do you know again we've 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 mentioned it a few times today like the event has to be as profitable as possible in the best way possible so we have to avoid things like clashing with other big events and stuff that happens all over the country and stuff like that but at the same time we do lead the charge because we have the faith and popularity in what we do so for us yes definitely it will look very different to this year rs coom as you mentioned is technically a it's not a an us run event uh there's a few events throughout the year like the steam rally um there's a new event coming in june i think it's signed off max Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're working with like Masters of Motoring. That's a, that's a this week signed off, like a very different event. Something we'll heavily promote and get behind, but it's an event run by external yeah, people, which is a different yeah. challenge for me altogether. But some of these people were like, this is the week we want. We only want this week. Hence why this year just got, like, it was well within their rights. It's, you know, it's building that sort of expectation on it being that time of year. Autumn yeah. Classic, we can never move it from the weekend is on. That's. <laughs> That's the thing, but no, it is. It's highlighted, and it is something that has been a leading factor in us putting this year's next year's schedule together. Fair dues, right? Um, don't need too many words on these ones, I don't think. Adam Higgins, model for Formula Four champion at Coombe. No need for garages at Coombe. Just some electricity hookups for competitors <laughs> and visitors. Uh, there's a chuckle there from George. I think you've heard that one before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Steve West. Yeah. It's the Steve Weston thing, yeah. We'll hide behind. Good point, Adam. We'll uh, we'll we'll have Steve Weston on at some point, but he wanted to wait until there was more done and more planned, basically. Uh, and I didn't want an odd number on the screen. Uh, <laughs> and on the the garage one, and I'd imagine that Goose is comp- uh, is talking about TCR more than anything. Why not use temporary garages? Okay, they would need assembly, but at least that wouldn't annoy the planning committee. There's a nod there from a yeah. couple of people that have talked yeah, about that. Yeah, that is that is something that we we spoke about, particularly with TCR. Is you know if, if there was a you know a high profile series that wanted to come to the track that kind of required garages, or that was one of their their must haves, then you know we would look at putting up temporary garages. But again, it's not something that we'd want to invest in doing it unless we had to because it it's a temporary thing and it's going to cost money. That's going to take oh, away so from funny. what we can look to invest. Yeah, you know, we want to invest in in permanent infrastructure but you know that being said you know it would it it would be done if it would help bring you know a high profile series like that to the to the circuit yep agreed uh yeah false economy that's the whole thing uh tom says hi max any chance open pit days for bikes will ever happen again last one i did was really good back in 2020 so we're not bringing in open pit lane track uh, bike track days for next year, but we are bringing in uh, what we're calling premier or premium bike track days. Um, we're bringing in three of those for next year. Um, details for those will be be shared shortly, I believe. But yeah, it will be be more time on track, is what I would say. But yeah, keep an eye out for those. Like it. Uh, John Creek says tarmac public car parks. Again, I think I think it, it, it's it's a common theme. Is that yes? Again, that's another thing that we'd like to have, but you know, it, it's not necessarily at the at the top of the priority list at the moment. Um, you know, we have we have things that that have to be done. Um, you know, we have refurbishment and some um, new developments that are, that are top priority, and that's what's being done over this winter. Um, all of those things are on the card, and they're most likely on on Steve Weston's very long list. But yes, you know it. It, you know, we can't. Unfortunately, as much as we like to to do everything at once and you know transform it, 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 it it's going to be a process. And you know, all of these kind of things are on are on the agenda or are being at least being discussed. But it, you know, it, it's things for the for further down the line. What I'll also say is because I'm going to try and whip through this because we've still got a few, fair few comments or questions that I do want to just put up there with as few words as possible to answer them. But also, all three of you, think of a closing statement to let the fans know what they can look forward to from your uh, role, what you're going to do. So it gives you time to think about that one, guys. Hopefully you'll have something. Uh, ben Hayward says, may I say thank you for the bacon and sausage vouchers following the season ticket price drop. Really nice touch, I thought. So nice. Thank you, Ben, for the lovely comment. Uh, Angela, Martin's better half, says, are there going to be bike nights again? Yes. Thank you. That's what <laughs> that one needs. 
Uh, Adam Weller. Hello, Adam, one of my fellow commentators. He says, Castle Coombe has its own microclimate, <laughs> quoting that. He says, I fondly remember being there in mid-April and seeing snow during a morning qualifying. I commend this team for working hard to outdo themselves. 100% agree. Uh, Jackie Ford says, "Good congratulations on your wedding, Jackie and John Ford. Many, many congratulations, guys. Good luck getting John Ford on Coombe TV. More chance of getting Max Ford, our crazy hound, on. <laughs> Max does have form appearing on TV. Jackie, I think you might be wrong. I think I'm going to be getting Mr. Ford on the TV. Uh, we're going to be talking about some things, so you're going to be pleasantly surprised, Jackie, I think. Um... Andy Abraham says, must say you've put in a well-needed boost to promote the circuit. So that's good. That's one of our local drivers, race for the Classic Touring Car, uh, in the Classic Touring Car Racing Club, whose awards I'm hosting the week after the Coombe ones. Uh, and it's nice to see that he's uh, congratulating you guys on, on the work, promoting it. Lynn Hoy, one of our Mighty Orange Army, Autumn Classic was excellent. And then we heard that a lot, to be honest with you, which is uh, wonderful to see. Oh, Colin Porter, looking forward to seeing Dorsey at the Classic Touring Car Racing Club Awards dinner. Looking forward to seeing you there, mate. Uh, it's going to be good fun. Uh, you were talking about festive food earlier. Daniel Williams says, had my first Greg's festive bake the other day, so must be Christmas. I, I hadn't even heard the festive bakes right yet, but Apparently so, I might be going to Greg's tomorrow. There you go, sales and marketing manager, George. You've got to get those in for the office team next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Danny, your other half, Max, says the drifting was the most exhilarating thing I've ever done. And I'm not surprised he says that. Um, Jane Cooper says first class heated shower and toilet facilities for overnighters. Yeah. That's a Steve okay. Weston thing again, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Believe yeah. that. Uh, more bike notes says Chris Rea. Yep, the answers to that. Um, Peggy Spackman says merging race day at Autumn Classic with traders and clubs was brilliant. So there you go. A compliment uh, to to you, Rich, in particular. There, British Car Action Day would be good. Again, in the discussions, it's really what like. Our racing days, we are limited to the number of action days yeah. we can do. So we've just analysed this year's action days to see which ones carry on for next year. There's been no dramatic changes, unfortunately, nothing to <laughs> shout about there. But they will always be under constant review. Yeah, um, that's that's where we're at with it. Like you know, it's, we're, we're... it's in discussions, yeah. Rich. That's all we want to hear. Mate. That's a good thing. <laughs> Uh, Graham Conlon, one of the hardcore, says next season will be my 53rd year of spectating. You legend, mate. You legend. So things like toilets become very important. I'm with you. I understand that. <laughs> uh, Adam Weller, commentary friend. Castle Coombe Fusion Festivals, one for Italian and German car championships and clubs, one for French and American, etc. Yeah, we can have fusions. That's a good idea. Um, James Downton says, what about doing some breakfast car clubs? He says so, mate as well. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, George, we had this conversation today. Today, yeah. So, really? Yeah, sort of yeah I mean, from a from a learning perspective, again, I, I'll lean on into that. I I think the the idea is that we approach car clubs or car clubs approach us about wanting to come because obviously, if we open up the doors on like a Sunday morning for any car to turn up and have a breakfast, we find ourselves in the um, bike night. Um, I want to say overwhelmed, but the, the bike night numbers that we were like, you know, that's a definite possibility yeah. because the draw of, of Castle Coombe to come and, and bring a vehicle. So, uh, I, you know, as part of my closing statement, I'll get to that, but, you know, contact details, we've got an events at Castle Coombe circuit dot co UK email bo inbox, which is, you know, okay. one of my inboxes, like I'm open to offers and people reaching out and, you know, I, that's, that's part of it. Like that, events inbox is is there it's ready to be utilized and you know to get it up however you can on the screen and stuff like people like i said people have these ideas for events and mm -hmm. stuff please know that we are also having these events it's you know it's very much a realization that there's only so many days in the year let alone so many days between yeah. march and october where we can actually put these things on so you know the priorities of making money to boost the circuit but at the same time offering 
the circuit out to more and more audiences on things like car meets and bike nights and stuff like that, where we're not making a commercial entity. It's it's then shouting about the things that we do alongside that. So yeah, quick answer. Sorry, I don't give quick answers. Doors, you don't. I was going to say that you <laughs> don't do, Rich. But listen, in the private chat for our offline bit that I told you that we've got, put that email address you want, and I'll copy and paste that as a as a banner to put across the top. So you do that now, Rich. Yeah. Just type it in our private chat. Hopefully you saw where that was, and you can just mm-hmm. type it in, and I'll copy and paste it in. Um, Lynn Hoy says the band at the Autumn Classic was excellent. It was like the job center scene from the Full Monty with the start line or post one marshals breaking into little moves. We couldn't help ourselves, so they you got them all dancing, which is brilliant. Nick Holmes from Club Racing UK says club cars and enthusiasts at tracks whilst racing is on track is the perfect combo. Definitely agree. Um, ah, Jamie Peters Ennis says it was so refreshing. It's so refreshing to hear of the potential plans for Coombe. Seeing the crowd back to where it was was lovely. 2024 sounds very exciting for the circuit, and I applaud the new team's enthusiasm and passion. Are there plans to put power in the paddock? Steve Weston comments. So we'll wait for that one, uh, Jamie Peters Ennis. Um, Jane Cooper says, Surely paddock facilities are a priority. Yeah, so the the priority again, technically a Steve Weston question, but the the priority over this winter is certain facilities in the paddock and certain facilities that get used most by uh, attendees and spectators. Um, so we've we've tried to identify either the places where people use them the most or the places where you know it's you know it perhaps needs to be done for for safety or you know like building management reasons. So. Yes, there's there's areas of the paddock and areas are elsewhere that we're looking at for this winter in particular, um, because they're the, the, either the ones that are most used or most in need of, of work. Yeah, totally understand. Uh, Baldrick Brown says, started quarry block today, so will be open. So that's nice of him to say there. Um, oh, this is a good one. James Downton says, it would be nice to see Rally Day bigger like it used to be. It's going to be rich, isn't it? It's called Rally Day XL. I have heard it's going to be bigger. Uh, I've heard we to the point we've had to rename it. So uh, Rally Day XL 2024 is a two-dayer. Um, we're bringing in lots. I think, you know, I, I was here for Rally Day this year. I'd only been here a month or two. Um, one of the most fed back events, I think, for people's comments about what was going on. And, yeah, I... Can rest assured we've put a full committee together to to bring rally day i can't sit here and say it's going to go back to its its former glories and stuff like that but we are working with plenty of rally enthusiasts and people to get it done i mean the the two dayer is sort of leading into the fact that something on that second day will be something that the circuit hasn't seen properly in a long time so i'll leave it there uh, yeah, no, I, I think that was good enough. So there you go. Events at castlecombecircuit.co.uk. I've also put it in the chat so that people can see that. Right, quickly then, uh, I've got to go back up. Where did we get to? Um, how about a modified car night, perhaps a Friday, a few months during the summer? That's asking for trouble, isn't it? A modified car <laughs> night. Can we go back to our previous uh, dialogue with the locals and yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, a great idea, great uh, to to do that. We'd want to do everything. We'd love to be running stuff on there till you know ten o'clock at night and stuff like that. But but that's what cost um, Mallory. That's what cost Mallory Park as an example. So we've got to be very, very careful. Uh, Luca, the legend that is Luca that organises all the drifting. More drifting, please. And I know there's always talk. And 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 Graham himself was interested in that idea of actually having a, a drifting competition during a race day as well. That, that that's sort of always there, sort of like playing with the idea. So definitely would like to see more of that. Um and in fact, Danny Wilson says, I second this. I'm not surprised. Uh, and this is another good point. Goose says, a lot of the drifters have the exhaust tips pointed down. So the noise is pointed at the circuit, not straight out of the exhaust. Like a normal car, it does make a difference, apparently. Uh, oh, our dancing Marshall Pippa Gore says, waving high, fresh from Race of Remembrance at, at Anglesey. Um, I'm not going to put up that one. Uh, 
oh, this is another one. Andy Lawrence running late. Sorry. Investment in fiber for lights, timekeepers and live streamers would be helpful. That's one for, for Steve, I'm sure. And it, it is one that Steve's looked at and, and has got costs for. Again, that's a very, very expensive. that's a very expensive investment. So again, yeah. it, it's on Steve's list, but it is a little way down because it is very, very expensive. It is. It is massively. I'm aware of that one. Ben Hayward says, all premium bike track days, like take my money already. Uh, Adam Higgins, Formula Ford racer, <coughs> race car test day sessions times need looking into. All other circuits have longer sessions for a good reason. A 15-minute session isn't long enough to test race cars properly, i.e. making changes and trying it out immediately. At least 25 minutes would be better. That's probably yeah. one for me to take to the racing club, isn't it? It's it's a tricky one. Well, I, I can speak from the, the bike side because it is a, is a similar thing where sessions can be shorter at Coombe, but that comes down to the fact that um, noise limits mean that we can only have a small number of people out on track. So if we were to make, you know, long, say like half hour sessions, we just wouldn't be able to have as many people on the test days. So although some people will be getting more track time, other people will be getting none because that yeah. we just can't have more, more cars or more bikes out on track. So yeah. I get the frustration that that sometimes the sessions can kind of go over in a flash because I've I've felt that myself. But on the other side, you wouldn't ever, or at least I've never experienced track time that's so quiet. So it is you get less yeah. of it, but I'd say it's it's perhaps more valuable. Um, it's it's yeah, interesting it, it though, Adam. We'll, noise, unfortunately, yeah, and we'll take that on board, Adam. And I think that it did come up in a in a board meeting, and you said I suppose that would be another one for Mister Weston, not necessarily that one for him. To be fair, <laughs> um, uh, let me just create uh, Richard Beard, our very own Beardy. Great to hear from the team, including Dorsey, of course. Twenty twenty four, bring it on, indeed. Um, so what we got here, Alex Davis says, may already be raised, but a suggested change for next year is a one-way system needed between red zone and trailer park at shows. Many shows get issues with cars and or trailers trying to go both ways on a single track road. The outside lane could be utilized to create a one-way system. Just one for you to take on board, I guess, and have a think about there, guys. Um... The uh, would also like to know more on Rally Day XL as it looks... A two-day event next year. Minimal right. words, Rich, but but is that conf what do we know? What are we allowed to know? Uh, yes. That's <laughs> no, enough it, words for me. <laughs> I, I sort of touched on it earlier. I don't know when this comment sort of came up, but yeah, I yeah, there's a lot going into it. Um, stuff being released over the next couple of weeks. Um, unfortunately, something like Rally Day is for next year. Rally Day XL, to call it what it is, is having a lot of moving parts so that if even if we just release the dates and stuff for now there's going to be stuff coming out throughout the yeah. year um and again a shout out to the events inbox that i've put up like you put up for stores you like get involved if you if it's bitch you you think we're missing like I, it's an open thing it's an event that people love like i need i need and always happy to tap into people's passions and comments and stuff so yeah send it over and I love the fact that I'm hopefully going to be involved in that this year with you guys, which uh, will be absolutely wicked. Um, where do I get to? Uh, uh, I've lost lost where I was. I think Sarah Louise repeated the question because I took a while. Emma's also done uh, info at castlecombecircuit.co.uk. is an important one as well. Uh, Lucy Hezza says, Rich is doing such an amazing job. There's your fan. I know her. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, not a question actually from Sarah Louise. She says, but more a thank you. A few years ago, while at Summer Action Day, I was taken in at the track. The medical team were first class and looked after me and got me to hospital. Like I said, first class medical team. Sadly, I had experience of that myself this year as well when I was rushed off with that. Uh, with a heart scare and i agree they are absolutely amazing and uh, god bless every single one of them uh chris buckley any chance of leveling or resurfing or widening the pit exit which is used as the start line for several of the sprints that are runners currently it's downhill i'll put that to steve weston uh mm -hmm. ben hayward bless you cracking broadcast very positive thank you all spot on uh and sophie moss says any chance of extending the paddock area especially with the ng roast racing road racing club weekends as there just isn't enough room for everyone with just one vehicle per rider i'm not sure where that could happen to be honest with you it yeah it, it's tricky because 
although Castle Coombe is a big site, actually the outside of the track isn't that massive. So, you know, we have the main paddock and then the paddock B area, the kind of the overspill that we have is is the option to move into Chippenham Road, which is is the road from the paddock up to Quarry Corner. Um, so there is, you know, appreciate that it's a little bit ice of the main paddock, um, but but that that's sort of the next area to go. Um, obviously, it is on grass at the moment. And, you know, again, that's something that we could look look at in future. But yeah, I think in the short term, um, it won't change. So tricky because that then loses spectator parking, which of course we've, we're we're blessed with uh, spectator numbers. So there's no easy answer to that one. Uh, Angela also says medical staff looked after me in March. I remember that, Angela. I heard all about that. Um, they are amazing. So that backs that one up. So that's the end of the comments and the questions. Um, right, which order shall I do this in? I'm going to go with you first, Max. Any closing comments that you can give anybody? Um, I think from from uh the work that i'm doing i'd say um keep an eye out over the next few months for for these um partnerships that we're going to be announcing i think you know some of them um may be quite obvious and then i think some of the others may be quite a surprise and you know they're going to bring some interesting elements to the events and to to the circuit in general next year um so yeah i'd, I'd say in the short term really, really keep an eye out for that because i think there'll be some yeah a few surprises there maybe I like the sound of that. Interestingly, Nick Ramsden says Paddock B cannot hear Paddock announcements. This needs to be looked into. So uh, we'll pass that on the message to Steve. And Adam says, Chris, when is Steve Wesson on Coom TV? I'll come back then as I have a few questions. Watch this space, Adam. I think, he, I think he's going to need his own episode. It's just a QA yeah. with Steve Weston. <laughs> it, it, it is, but rest assured that they are a team, Adam. So please don't think it was wasted. Uh, Steve actually just didn't think that he'd have much to say or answer. He was very wrong on this one. Bless him. We're joking uh, about him having his own show, but he just thought that he'd been on several times before. There wouldn't be enough, and he was he was definitely wrong on this one, which is great. It's really encouraging. Rest assured, everything that has been said or asked here is it's going to get fed back, and, and it doesn't mean it'll all happen, but it means that we know that there are questions being asked uh, as well. John Creek says, appreciate that these things cost a lot of money and would be good to see the circuit improve over time, step by step. Uh, right. George, final uh, words from you, my friend. Yeah. Um, I think mainly that, yeah, that we're just going to, keep going like that last thing just said like step by step looking to improve and like yeah just trying our best and we're listening to what people are doing like what people are saying on for all the feedback channels we have and looking at what other events do to try and get up to the market standard but yeah just excited more than anything and just want to like take the journey together and enjoy it really i think and, I, and what i'll, I'll emphasize with these guys as well is that it's not that they're just they are listening they are, are taking it on board, but equally they're not wallowing and suddenly going, oh, we'll do what you say, oh, we'll do what you say, which doesn't work, I can assure you. I've seen that go very, very wrong as well. They take on board, they've got to make it work commercially, and that's why every single one of these uh, these guys are, are absolutely vital. Um, question here, I don't know, this is probably one for the racing club more than anything else. Is there any chance of any endurance racing at all? Is that a racing club question? I, I think it is. I know, I know we have some longer races at the Awesome Classic, the sort of 90 minute races. Um, but yeah, it, the the races that that happen as part of the racing events come down to the racing club themselves. You know, they have their own championships and then they arrange um, for, yeah. for guest series to come in. So they're always trying to find different and interesting classes. But yeah, at the moment, the only sort of longer race that I'm aware of is it is the um, I think it's the classic GT and sports car cup at the Austin. It's, Classic. It's an interesting challenge, this one, though, because I know I cover like even I've covered 24 hour races and, and, and everything between sprint and that. But quite a lot of spectators actually complain about them as well and say it's one for the drivers, not the spectators, which isn't always fully true, I have to say. I mean, Jamie Peters Ennis was watching earlier, may still be, and he'll say about the Fun Cup is just incredible. I cover the Enduro KA and the, the C1 Challenge, and it just provides some of the most incredible racing. But it's a real Marmite, isn't it? You yeah, know, I, I, I know some people have, have, have not been a fan of endurance racing, which shall we say... Um, but you know that that and but that's what the, the racing club try and do. They try and bring in a little bit of everything. So you know, if whatever you're a fan of, there should be something um, that's just for you at some point over the year. Agreed. 
Uh, another thank you. Just wanted to say thank you for all the hard work that goes into the NG race meetings. Mm -hmm. Castle Coombe is my partner's favourite circuit with it being very similar surface to the roads, which is ironic. Anybody who goes on it goes, it's the smoothest surface I've ever been on. But the, when you consider that, um, that yeah, the uh, the TT teams come and test here, it sort of tells you a lot. There you go. Jamie is watching. Fun Cup at Coombe would be amazing. I agree. But then Goose at Quarry Harcourt, yeah, I was one. 90 minutes was far too long for a classic race. It, it's such a split. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Andy Lawrence from uh, Bristol Motor Club says this really does highlight some of the bigger problems with motorsport in general. So many things that the venue have no say on because other stakeholders are responsible for that part. Absolutely. In, in many, many ways. Rich, over to you, my friend. What's your your closing words? Uh, I, well, I guess, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up as a team sort of thing as well. Just like a thank you really to everyone uh, that comes to the track and has definitely come to the track over the last six months since I've been there. Um, keep keep giving us your feedback keep listening keep looking out for what we're doing hopefully we'll be invited on to to more of these things yeah. uh moving forward or probably no one's falling asleep listening to us talking <laughs> and stuff um my passion is definitely growing for castle coom and what we're doing so i'm going to continue to do my best what we've effectively developed within castle coom from the management level is a, is a little team uh you know we we do say there's the four of us when we include steve but you know, Chris Mason, the medical team, Cap for the um, racing club, like Emma with, you know, all the stuff with the school. Like, there's just so much that you don't always get to see, but then these opportunities for us to sort of tell everyone sort of what's going on and what to be excited for, even though I've very much kept a rally day close to my chest that's so far at the minute. You know, that's, that's, that's what it's all about. And I think that's what we're all really enjoying. So, yeah, just, uh, just keep watching, keep listening. Indeed. Well, some final lovely comments coming in. Jane Cooper says, great discussion, guys. Coombe is in my blood too. It's a historic venue that needs to continue. Tim Perry, one of Orange Army. Teamwork is dream work. Well, uh, good to see the changes over time. Thank you guys for all your work. Uh, Angela says, happy Christmas, guys. See you next year. Don't start that yet, Angela. You'll, you'll encourage uh, uh, Danny to start putting more decorations up as well. <laughs> Uh, Goose says, overall, everything looks positive, it seems, uh, which is really good to see. Best of luck. Roll on 2024. Uh, Matt Crozier says, have to say the ARDS training was brilliant. Please remember, you can get that at, at Castle Coombe as well. Thanks for engaging with the people who want to support the circuit. Our very own Emma Strawford says, well done, guys. Don't be late in the morning, you guys. All right. No <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Team Coombe. And that we they got mentioned earlier as well, the beloved Castle Coombe Steam Rally. Thanks for all the update. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. It was a great opportunity. Thank you very much to, to Rich, to George, to Max for coming on tonight, guys. It's been wonderful to catch up with the people, the job, and the tasks at hand. So thank you for all your work and for coming on tonight. Cheers for having us, Chris. Thank Cheers, you. everyone. No problem. Thanks, guys. Listen, take it steady. We'll catch up with you soon. And as Tim says, dilly, dilly indeed. So we'll play you out with the close. <laughs>